All right. Welcome, everybody, to Feelings of the Geekery, the DragonCon 2015 edition. Um, <laughs> this is kind of a last-minute thing, so we haven't really done a bunch of planning or anything, but uh, welcome to Feelings. Uh, I'm Tara. I've got Becca here. She writes for the website. And we also have Stephanie and Eve with us. Welcome, guys. A uh, friendly reminder that this is also a podcast, so please subscribe to us on iTunes so you don't miss any of our feelings. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, please remember that this is recorded live, so we're not exactly sure what's going to happen. So forgive us any technical difficulties or accidental swears. Never accidental. Oh. <laughs> so you, can, um, you can join in the conversation with hashtag geeky feelings. I mean, come on. How will we know if we're wrong if you don't tell us? <laughs> um, and as always, our fun disclaimer, we would like to remind all of you that the views expressed on this webcast are those of the hosts and guests as individuals and do not represent, uh, do not necessarily represent the geeky or the webcast itself as a whole. Um, real quick, our monthly episode of Feelings will air this coming Thursday, September 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, so don't forget to tune in. And now, I'm, since I'm a regular on here, I'm going to let uh, you all introduce yourselves. Becca? Um, hi, I'm Becca. I write for the Gigiri. Um I've been there for a few months now, and uh, this past Dragon Con was actually my first Dragon Con. I'm super new to conventions as a whole. Um, I got into it with Tara, and I'm really, really excited to be here tonight and excited to uh, talk all manner of deviation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Stephanie, uh, where do you tell about your cosplay page and all that fun stuff? Um, okay. Well, I am Stephanie Lynn. I am a avid cosplayer. I've been doing it for about, I don't even know how long now. Um, I am the Makeup Mama on... Facebook, www.facebook backslash the Makeup Mama Cosplay. And I've been going to Dragon Con. I think this was my fifth Dragon Con, but I've been going to cons forever. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of how I am. It was my fourth Dragon Con, but I was going to I was going to conventions long before that. So uh, and Eve, what about you? Um, I am the founder of Some Nerd Girl. Uh, some Nerd Girl WordPress uh, is where we have our blog. We just put it up. It's awesome. We talk about nerdy things and girly things. Uh, fifth year for Dragon Con for me. It was my first Dragon Con, uh, my first con, really, at Dragon Con, and I have not been able to stop going, so I'm a little addicted. Uh, I don't foresee the trend stopping either. <laughs> Yeah, like I keep telling myself I'm going to cut back on the number of conventions I go to every year, and every year that's like a big joke. And ever. now I feel like that I'm, now that I'm starting to go to conventions, it's going to be, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this Dragon Con was Becca's first convention as press, too, Yeah, so. it was, yeah, but like I've been, I, Conugo was my first one, and I've been to a couple since then, but Dragon Con, like, top all of them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. I go through yeah. phases. I'm like, uh, I don't think I'll go next year. It's kind of expensive, and no, I really want to go. And right after the con, I'm like, I have to go. I'll buy the tickets and the hotel, and it's all yeah, done. Yeah. I've made up my mind for the next year. Yeah, the the hotel this year honestly was like a big. Uh, it was a big thing for the idea of me going next year because they grandfathered in people who stayed at the Hyatt. That's how they so. get to oh, yeah. Yeah, and we're, we're, we're gonna, giving you a little taste. Come <laughs> here, little children. <laughs> yeah. We'll <put> you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and we'll, we'll actually get into that a little bit more later, I think. Um, first, since now we've all introduced ourselves, I want to talk about the not so great things about Dragon Con first. I only have a couple. I really overall like love the convention, but there's always some things that people want to bitch about, I think. Um, <laughs> so uh, do you guys have any Dragon Con cons that you want to share? Um, I do. <laughs> Uh-oh. As, as a cosplayer, I think it's really difficult because you are walking through and you're in your costumes and you make these elaborate costumes and you work so hard on them and you do get stopped quite frequently for your pictures, which is fantastic and it's wonderful to get recognition for it. But I feel that there is no respect for the costume sometimes because I've had people come up to me and touch my costumes or touch my wig or I have one instance where I was in Black Widow and someone grabbed my hair, my natural hair, thinking it was a wig. Oh, no. And I was oh like, my God. <laughs> like, no, this is my hair color. This is my actual hair color. Um, 
that's one of my only, I mean, that doesn't happen to everyone. Also, I think that as a not as known cosplayer, you get kind of shafted a little bit because everybody wants to see the bigger cosplayers. So I mean, can we? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Were, were you were you in the pulse bar with us on Sunday night when the Yaya sister had showed up? Yeah. And it was literally oh just God. like two dozen girls dressed up no, like Yaya. No, they were also <laughs> there. Also, a couple of guys too that had the wig on. Oh, I saw later. Oh yeah. 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 yeah that was. Interesting. <laughs> that that's I think one of the only cons, and the biggest the biggest con about this con is the hotels. Oh God. Yeah. Hotel, yeah. It is the worst thing about this con. It's expensive. Everything is expensive at the con. So if you don't do it properly, you're blowing thousands of dollars just on uh-huh. rent. Stuff. So I think that's the one thing that I have issues with with the con itself, and it has made it hard for me to go. Um, in the past, including this year, made it very hard for me to go. Um, one of the things I want to talk about, have any of y'all used Froggy's photos? <laughs> yes. Because this was my first year. Have you used yeah. them before, Eve? No, no. This is my first year doing it, and I only did it because uh, I wanted the photo with the seven Battlestar people. I did it, too. And she did it with yeah. Uh, oh, Richard Harmon. Yeah. yeah. I, um, yeah. To be honest, like it wasn't the worst thing I've ever experienced, uh, mm. but it was a mess. Mm. Like, how they, they, it's literally, like, they crowd you into this room, and they put you in there's these no narrow... There's no air conditioning, basically. No, yeah, yeah, there's no... I mean, there's air conditioning, but there's no, um, like, air circulation, yeah. so it just doesn't... And, like, they put you, like, cattle it's in like these little, like, narrow lanes that, like, to be taped. honest... They're taped on the floor. They're taped on the floor. Yeah, so there's there's no walls or anything. There's just these tape on the floor, and you're in these narrow lanes. You're crowded in with a bunch of people. Come on, on Sunday, which is when I did it, most everybody yeah. smelled. Yeah. And, mm, gross. I, I mean, I was, yeah. yeah, I was just standing there, and I'm like, I'm a pretty, like, slim person. You know, I don't take up a lot of room, but I was wearing Starbucks, and I had the big holsters and the guns on my legs. And, oh, my God, like, being in that little tight lane, every time I turned around, I was brushing into somebody. Yeah. Well, yeah. I purposely avoided the line situation for at least the big popular photo shoots. First of all, depending on what you want to do at Dragon Con is where your cons come from. So my right. line issue is with the panels. Like, it's mm-hmm. not necessarily cramped or anything, but it's unorganized, and it's mm-hmm. really disheartening because... I it's feel like it gets worse every year. It, it, you know, it waver. It really depends on who it is, too, and that's the problem, is the volunteer um, people that, that go there every year and give their time, that's awesome, they're just not aligned. They're not doing things the same way, and right. so it creates this confusion, and the people that go for five years in a row, we kind of remember how it happened last year when you change it up. It's frustrating, yeah. and when people don't get into panels, it's frustrating, and the fact that they, they will squeeze you in those lines, and, and the whole picture taking thing is weird to me because you get like five seconds with the people you take a picture and it feels very like conveyor belts kind of demeaning in a little bit of a way it's yeah Yeah. I mean and the atrium the Marriott atrium like that ballroom oh my god the line situation for that is it's it's a mess every year and like you said it's like people aren't on the same page it's not the volunteers fault it's really not they're doing the best they can, like, and I totally respect what they do. Because like, I don't know. <laughs> this is the first year I actually cracked open the little like rules pamphlet that they give you, and I'm like, let me read the official line policy so I can school some people. I didn't, but it basically says, you know, line up after the previous panel has been seated or an hour before, and everyone right. forgets that first part. They just they are hard line hour before, despite the fact there's like 500 people clogging up the atrium trying to get in line. The hardest, the hardest thing about the lines for me is that, like, I did Froggies with my daughter one year, and it was to see Bowerman, and I had her holsters and a stroller because they want the kids in the stroller because they think, oh, okay, this is easier, blah, 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 blah. But it was torture. I mean, it was absolutely tor- you know, absolute torture. And I actually, because of my daughter, we stayed with Bowerman for over time because he wanted us, us to stay there and do multiple pictures that he wanted. Um, but if I didn't, I had help. I had two people helping me at the time. I had, um, you know, help me with my daughter and helping me with all my stuff. But if I didn't have that, there was no way I would have been able to do it by myself. So the problem with the lines is, and this happened with Brian Humphreys, with, if you get your photo done by Brian, who's fantastic, who does great photos, he was the official photographer for Dragon, mm-hmm. um, his line got screwed over. Like, he, he would tape it, people would cut, 
people would do this, people would do that. Mm. And finally got to the point that people that know Brian and know the people that work with him were basically just like, this is not fair. This is not fair for the people who spent the money because it's not cheap to get a photo pass and you, people just cut. So, and a lot of costumes are heavy, they're uncomfortable, they're hot, they're, you know, you basically are in this costume for the fact that you want to show it off, but unfortunately the volunteers get a lot of the crap, but it's not their fault, it's what they're being told what to it's do. It's really not, and I can't yeah. imagine DragonCon doesn't make enough money to invest in some Toyota consultant to come in and tell them how to do lines, because, you know, that's really what it comes down to, it's just organization. Yeah, and, and again, yeah, it's, it's definitely about the volunteers not all being like not being all on the same page. Um, I know. Also, by side note, didn't Brian Humphrey have like one of his cameras stolen? Brian had a camera stolen the last day of the con, and that is, we like, did a, we did a Kickstarter, and I mean, people obviously were very pissed off. And right. I actually spoken to him about it, and he said that it bothered him more so because it's just such a lack of disrespect. But yeah. he. It wasn't about the camera. It was just about the fact that he's been there for so many years. And well, I mean, and it's also, no like, one of the things I saw him say was that it was about the, the cosplayers who won't get their pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they were on that, you know, they were on the memory card on that camera. Oh, and, yeah. and that was what really, I saw that they did the Kickstarter and they, like, blew it out of the water. Like, he, he will get that camera back. And, like, that's awesome. I mean, if there's one thing I can say about Dragon Con, it's that it's, it's really, as big as it is, it really is, like, a family yeah. Um, yeah. That, like it just sucks. Like all those pictures that got lost and everything. Like I don't even understand why, at a at a convention of all places, you'd steal somebody's camera. Like because especially his. So many people. I mean, there's stuff that's constantly stolen. I mean, like mm. it, it's so many people in your jam packed and like, you know, I it's one of my major it's my major con every year. It's the one that I blow out of the water and I do the most for. But like I stay in the Marriott every year which is torture because of the freaking elevator situation. <laughs> That's um, so I take the right stairs. There. Like, I don't care what floor I'm on. I mean, I will take the stairs. I mean, I took the yeah. stairs to the 12th floor every day, every single time, mm -hmm. every costume change. In every costume, I was Jessica Rabbit in, like, seven and a half inch heels, and I walked mm -hmm. the stairs. Like, you <laughs> do what you yeah. have to do in the mirror. I was, I was, I've been... On third floor Hyatt, sixth floor Hyatt, and eighth floor Hyatt, and I've always take like the only time I take the elevator is checking in and checking out, and even checking out. I brought bags this year, like messenger bags and, and like double bags. You're and stuff. the bag lady going the, up and down yeah, the stairs. The yeah. only thing I needed the <laughs> elevator for was my cooler. Yeah, and that even that like getting out on Monday morning, ugh. Um, but another thing I want to talk about, because they've actually, supposedly this is changing for next year, we did nothing but complain about the Sheridan this year. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You guys. Did you guys stay at the Sheridan? Sheridan? No. No, we did not. Okay. Here's the thing. Okay. I've, I've been quiet. I've been quiet. Right? Yeah. I talk, okay. So my first Dragon Con, right? And they're like, all right, well, our passes are at the, the passes are at the Sheridan. I was like, all right, whatever. So the Sheridan is also home of Dragon Con Disability Services, and it's like, down a hill, but it's, like, the furthest con away, and nothing happens there that I know of that I it's would Trek, 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 Trek. It's, yeah. Like, yeah, it's, like, Trek, Trek, yeah, and okay. Heroes and Villains well, Ball. Yeah, okay, well, if you want to yes, do the I Trek, Trek, you're probably... Okay, well, yeah, so, like, if you're going to do the Trek, Trek, you're probably going to stay at the Sheraton, because, I mean, but I, I, I didn't have a badge at the Sheraton. I had a badge at the Hyatt, because I was pressed to pick up my badge there, um, but I walked with these guys, and... It's a nightmare. It's a thousand degrees in Atlanta in the summer. Not really. It's like ninety five, but that's still a thousand degrees. And it's so hot. it is hot. It's extremely hot. So like I was, I was just sweating. I was sweating like crazy. And I'm not the best in shape person. And you know, but Tara's super in shape, and I know that she was feeling the pain because it's brutal. There's it's mostly just walking back up that hill. Yeah, walking back I have, up the hill. Like, I have bad knees, so like really bad. Also, and that, my, that was my problem. I had to get my press pass like, after the fact, and then go back to disability services. So if you have a disability, if you're, you know, if you have something that prevents you from, you know... Like and if it, you're if you're a press, if you're a professional guest, or um, uh, if you're, like, a, an eternal member, your pass pickup is in the Hyatt or the yeah, Marriott. Yeah, like, the one that's, like, down, 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 down. So but, the easy version. 
<laughs> yeah, but then if you have to go to disability services, you have to go to the Sheridan. That's but a little backwards. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, they should have disability services in the Hyatt or the Marriott was kind of my point. But supposedly next year, badge pickup is going to be at the Hilton. Oh, I can't imagine would... what that's going to be like, though, because I don't. That that's probably the least spacious hotel out of all of them. Yeah. Well, I guess they're moving. They're moving. Not they do downstairs. So they I'm wondering. Downstairs. Oh, the downstairs. Pod. In the okay. basement of the. Yeah. Hotel, they have like the pods and the gaming and stuff, and where they do the blood drive. This year they did it. If they do it down there, you're fine because it's huge. It's a that's true. Oh yeah, and they're they're moving gaming next year too. Where yeah. We we don't know yet, but the rumor is America Smart. Huh. Did you see that? I, I saw that on Reddit. I think. Yeah, I mean, a Dragon Con is so many people. I mean, this year it hit seventy thousand on Saturday. Holy cow! And I think my biggest complaint about this year was the parade route because they did a new parade route. They're thinking, oh, this would be great. You'll still be able to get to your hotels. No, you cannot get to any hotel. You basically are stuck in your hotel until the end of the parade. I don't know what they can do about that, though. And honestly, I'm glad that they're changing things up. Like, they're trying do new things. It's been, like, 20... What, this is, like, their 26th or 27th year of Dragon Con. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's been a lot of stagnation and a lot of complaints about that. And I think since they reorged, it's been a lot better with them experimenting with new things, which is good, but... It's, it's mostly just, just experimentation like, comes failure. <laughs> well, yeah, and I mean, to be honest, like... The streets, the sidewalks, especially with all those effing planters that they randomly put all over the place. Yeah, this thanks, this Atlanta. Year. Thanks for nothing. Yeah, thanks, Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> they did this only like, for Dragon like, Con. Can we get like a thanks, Obama? But it's, yeah. It's for Dragon yes. Con, so it's like, yes. thanks, Atlanta. <laughs> I think Everything this is, that goes oh, wrong. you want green Atlanta. space in your city? Why? Just thanks, Atlanta. I can, make, I can do that on the meme thing. Oh, no, did we lose Stephanie? Um, yeah, she like she like lost her screen. No. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> Stephanie had to. Stephanie had to. Oh, you're back! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am, but I have to bounce because I got two kids. I got to go put to bed for school tomorrow. Oh, all right. Let me just say my final thing about Dragon. Yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, say what you I like. I love this con. It's a great con. It's a fun con. I don't feel it's a family oriented con. Mm. I feel that people believe it is, but it's not. Um, but it is a great con to get pictures done. It is the biggest costuming con on the East Coast. And, you know, my only complaint I had this year about the con itself was that they closed the celebrity rooms at 7, which Ooh. last year it was 8. So a lot of people who don't do Froggy, like I don't do Froggy, I would go to get my picture taken, and it was closed. So that thing. was my only issue with this year. That was the only thing I didn't get to do this year that I was very upset about. But other than that, it was a really fun year. I got to spend time with people. It was very, very crowded, but you, like Saturday night, I sat. Like I got, I found a seat and I actually got to sit, which was un, <laughs> especially, in, especially in Pulse Bar. So I mean, I think this year was a good year. I think the Dragon does have a lot that they need to work on, but I think it's also because there has been a lot of changes that they're making. And if they can get their hotel situation figured out and figure oh. out a way of like making it fair and stop using Passkey because Passkey always shuts down, then I think, I think it would be okay. But I think other than that, for a few of them, awesome. you know, other than that, I didn't really have any complaints. I had a great time. I was surrounded by fantastic people. Um, Tara, obviously, because Tara and Becca are my babies. What? <laughs> my babies. So. I'm so, I'm upset you missed our Sunday. You did too. We had like a Sunday night concert on our balcony at the Hyatt. What? I missed about it. We did like the four... We we did like the four chord songs, like all the things oh, you all the songs was you can whenever like That's when Danny and I were chasing around Richard Harmon in the pulse bar. Yeah, I that. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much for having me. I'm sorry I have to bounce. Oh no, bye bye. 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 Um, anyway, real quick, like, I'll, yeah, I'll segue into, like, the, the positives, because, like, we were talking about the Sheridan and disability services, and it sucks that it's in the Sheridan, because... I did that hike once with my friends because I was with a, a bunch of people who were new to the convention who needed to pick up passes they'd never been before. Is that mean even on them? Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, so that was bad like the first time, but then when I had to actually like get, because I you can't go to disability services until you have your badge, so I had to wait because the, the press badge pickup doesn't happen until a couple hours oh, after oh. regular pickup. So I had to wait, go back up to the Hyatt, pick up my badge, and then I didn't even oh. get down to Sheridan until the next morning. 
But God, that walk is hell. So I really hope they put it in the Hilton next year, as long as the Hilton can handle the crowds. I know people are worried about it, but I've never been down in the gaming area, so I can't really have it either. Yeah, my first year downtown, I was at the Days Inn, which is like by the Waffle House. It's like a landmark. And uh, I'm Florida girl, you know, everything's pretty flat here. And so I was like six blocks away from the host hotels, no problem. <laughs> No problem. It'll be great. So we're so close. We were at the airport last year, and I learned that the hard way. <laughs> well, the first year I was there, it was the same exact way. I was at the Holiday Inn Express behind the Westin, <laughs> and like nothing I cared about that year was in the Westin. So it was like everything I wanted to go to is at the Hyatt or the Marriott, and by and I didn't go to disability services that year, and by the second day I could hardly walk. Yeah, luckily I, I rock the combat boots pretty much the entire convention and they're like tactical so they're not like the jungle boots I had the first year which is a terrible mistake but um, yeah it was like almost like a sober test if I could get back to hotel like because it was all uphill. <laughs> the stairs were my sober test. I would, I would probably be sober even if I was drunk when I started by the time I got to the, the actual hotel. So. <laughs> So yeah, the cherry day like respectively seems not that bad. I, I like do the shortcut. I go out the back of the Marriott and then it's yeah. like a few blocks down, but it's still yeah. a pain in the ass and they don't let you line up inside. You have to line up outside, even though they have yeah, those, those um, snakes of, of, I don't know, the velvet ropes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we hit it at an, we hit it at an odd time this year where, uh, when, when I went with them to go pick up their badges, what time was it, like noon? Um, I think it was like eleven thirty or noon. Early. There was there nobody. Was like, yeah, there were like maybe what day? Two uh, Thursday. Oh yeah, yeah. There yeah was like nobody was, there. It was eleven thirty or noon, and we walked like right in. Whereas previous yeah. years, I've gone at like one o'clock or something, and by then, yeah, you're waiting an hour. Like, and most I've of had, it's outside. I have had all of the experiences. I've had wrapped around the building twice. I've had walk right up and everything in between. But it's it, we all put up with it. It's like childbirth. Yeah. You know, people who have multiple kids, they just like yeah. For me, it's mostly the walk. It's the walk to the Sheridan that gets me, and the walk, or more, even more so, the walk back because it's all uphill. Because oh, I'm, I'm a sweater too. Pilot. Like I sometimes plan my activities yeah. about how much I want to sweat that yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh my gosh, Friday night though, I wore. I was wearing my. Was it Friday? No, it was Thursday night. Thursday afternoon, I was wearing a Lolita dress and I was wearing a Raptor mask. And I took that <laughs> mask off. And no, I took the I took the mask off. I had eyelashes and everything it was great. Um, I took the mask off, and it was just like drenched. And I was like, oh, it was bad. It was good way to really detox. Bad. We should be yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Other than being in the Sheridan, that's like that's like to segue into like the positive things about Dragon Con. Generally, that's my big positive. Disability services at Dragon Con is amazing. Yeah. It's same people working there every year, pretty much. There may be like a couple of volunteers that are different, but the people that work the main desk, it's the same people. They are so helpful and so nice. Like it was easy for me this year because I knew what to ask for based on having gone previous years. Mm -hmm. But even if you don't know what to ask for, they like go out of their way to like make sure you're comfortable in a chair. They'll talk to you, say like, okay, like what do you need? All right, I'll go talk to this person. We'll get your information all set, whatever. It, it's they're so nice. Like yeah. I can't, I really cannot praise them enough because like I tried to do disability service at San Diego Comic-Con assuming it would be sort of like Dragon Con and they were like, you need a doctor's note signed within the net, within the past like 30 days saying like what you wow. can and can't do and like pretty much it's like you could be in a wheelchair and go up to their disability services and they still expect you to, I mean they are the yeah, I mean, let's face it, Dragon Con does a lot of things right, and they have a lot of great people that work for them every year, mm -hmm. and it's for basically nothing, and they they show up, they come out, and if you hear about some of these other conventions that just completely bomb, like Galacticon in Seattle this mm -hmm. year, and it, I think that puts a different perspective on Dragon Con for all the craziness that goes on, like, it could go so much worse. With 70,000 people in Atlanta, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's pretty impressive. And that's, I mean... <laughs> To be honest, I think that they undercut those numbers every year. I think so too. Because like two years ago, they said there were only 50,000 people there. I've been to MegaCon where they claimed there were 70,000 people and it never felt as crowded as nope. DragonCon. Yeah. I mean, it, did... I know that MegaCon isn't a big convention center and that makes it different because it's the same way with San Diego, but like, eh, like it, it, if I'm in a convention center and I'm feeling like more 
crowd. I don't know. I don't know. Dragon Con, eh. I think they undercut their numbers. I think they do partially to keep the fire marshal off their ass. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also this year on, on the pro side, like crowd control is so much better. Just putting up like those little like lanes in the Marriott where the, you can yeah. go off to the, the shopping center and then go off to the Hyatt. That was a huge difference. There was a lot more police presence. Do you guys notice that mm -hmm. this year? I well, I mean, I didn't, like, I, I noticed there were a lot of police because I, you know, I haven't gone before, but there were quite a few policemen out on the street whenever See, I was walking. I don't think, I don't, my problem is I, like, 90% of my convention this year was spent in the Hyatt and the Marriott. I only went outside this two times to go to the share. I'm talking about inside the hotels. Really? There See, were like Atlanta, Atlanta PD in the hotels all the time, and they were super mm -hmm. cool. They were chill. Yeah. They, they were just casually walking around. But it was like enough mm -hmm. to be like, okay, if there's anyone who wants to start shenanigans, it's probably not going to happen around these guys. Right. And nice. like they were, you know, they were like, I walked past a couple of them in, in the hotel that you mentioned it, and they were just standing there talking to a cosplayer. They were drinking, you know, I mean, I assume they were having a soda or water or whatever, but, you know, they were just chilling out. And it was really nice because, like, they were there, and it's kind of like a safety thing, but they weren't the intimidating. Time, yeah, they weren't intimidating at all. They were super chill dudes. I know, I was this close to asking for a picture. Well, <laughs> probably, probably they weren't intimidating because none of us are doing anything wrong. Mm, Which is good. <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh. Speaking of, like, the police, though, we got, I don't think you were with us. My friends and I got accosted by this kid clearly trying to sell drugs on something. Oh, my God. Like, he had this, like, bulletin board, and he was telling us about this app. Wait, is this the Hugs Not Drugs guy? No. Oh, never mind. No. Had, like, <laughs> that would be a brilliant bull cover, though. Right? Yeah, I know, right? Like, a <laughs> it was a fold-out bulletin board that he was carrying, and he was like, yeah, if you download this app, and, like, you tell me, like, what what numbers or he had like pins or something on his board. Those like, you super tell me, science -y. You tell me what <laughs> pin you want, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, try, like, clearly you're selling drugs. And my friends and I are like, we're like late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, we're drinking on a Sunday afternoon, but we're not going <laughs> to buy drugs from you. Listen, I, got, I, think I seriously is. was, I was this close, this close to reporting him. And then I got distracted by the Iron Throne. Shady things. No, I think there's a lot of shady stuff that goes on in Dragon Con that you don't hear about. I think there's there's probably lots of drugs, sex, and... There's, well, I mean, <laughs> and, and people can do whatever they want, honestly. Yeah. I don't care as long as it doesn't harm it's, others. It's, it's, not, it's like Don't I, ruin the con for everyone else is really yeah, I what I care about. It's like this kid like attached himself to one of my friends, and when that kid was like ignoring him, he ran to like a, another one of my friends who is like a really nice guy and will talk to basically anybody. <laughs> Uh, he, it was RJ first. We were like, no, RJ, no, RJ, RJ was dealer. like, Move on. RJ was like, no. RJ froze him out? Yeah. Wow. And Brian was like yapping with him. And after the fact, I was like, Brian, he was totally trying to tell us. <laughs> I love it. And I was like, I thought though. there was something weird about that. <laughs> I mean, he, you know, he wasn't falling for it. He thought the kid was creepy and like wouldn't leave us alone regardless. But yeah, the drug thing was surprising. One thing I do love about Dragon Con is meeting special, amazing people. I mean, mm. to continue with the pros theme, like that's one of my favorite things to do. And despite how crazy lines are, I actually really like standing in line because it's like a captive audience. And we, yeah. we all like the same thing, obviously. Mm -hmm. We're standing in line yeah. for an hour to go look at it. So uh, <laughs> I like, I like talking and meeting people. And um, I had a like three rum buckets <laughs> oh, yeah, the the buckets. The buckets. Uh, avoiding the Marriott, I stayed in the Hyatt and had three rum buckets and like hit on a lot of girls. And <laughs> yes. Like, and my my friend was like, "That dude is trying to pick you up." I'm like, "I don't notice guys trying to." Pick you up. <laughs> I was like, "Really?" He's like, "Yeah, he hugged you really tight when he wanted your picture." I was like, "Oh, cool." Oh. There's a Han gender bend over there. I'll be right back. I would have been like, "Don't, don't, don't." <laughs> No, no. I don't even notice. Like, I'm here, like, you're cool. You like me. You must like Starbucks. I mean, I, the thing is, I don't really notice either half the time. And, like, I'm... If a guy is hitting on me, a guy is hitting, me, hitting on me, it's whatever. But I am telling you, I, I'm the same way. I'm like, oh, yeah, that person just wanted a picture with me. Yeah. Uh, they were, like, hitting on you, you know? And I'm like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to worry about this con, that, this con. I just kind of chilled out. Except for that one guy in the mask, and he was like, 
he like, came up to me and he like put his arm around me. He's like, hey. And I was like, no. <laughs> that is so weird, man. They are weird because you can't see their face and I don't trust them. You can't trust yeah, them. masks are weird. Yeah. But uh, I mean, generally though, yeah, I, I, I've, I've had like negative experiences at Dragon Con involving people doing things they shouldn't and everything. But in, I think that the con itself handles it well with having a big police presence, having yeah. plenty of volunteers, having, you know, I've, I've never felt afraid of like, if something, I've always thought if something goes wrong, I can report it and mm. I'll be, you know, people will listen to me. Yeah. That type of thing. Yeah. Like, I've never, luckily I've never had a bad experience and I've like brought strangers back to the room just to like take the shoes off for a little bit, yeah. hit the flask or whatever. Well, and, but I have like lifelong friends out of these relationships. Oh. They've met someone. Oh, right. And I mean, but if it's somebody, amazing. if it's somebody you talk who, to for yeah. hours and oh, you yeah. like bring back to the room, that's like absolutely legitimate. I've done that at like almost every con. Or I unless remember. it's, Four yeah. o'clock in the morning, and if you just come back from a Mad Max rave, it's not actually a Mad Max rave, and a man follows you up in the elevator yeah. and tries to come in your room behind that's you. Not okay. No, yeah. Yeah, no, that's definitely no, not no. okay. I was so scared. I was uh, like, my friend told me she's like, whenever you get Dragon Con, you know, bad things will happen, and not like I, I worked at a toy store. And more bad things happen to me there than happen to me at Dragon Con. <laughs> like, come on, y'all. Yeah, no, and I kind of, I avoid the, the raves. I, like, I'm not a very social person. Dragon Con's a place I get to be, like, well, Captain Social. But I do like to do parties, of just, like, more, like, room parties or, like. He wasn't, like, from the rave. He didn't, like, he didn't have a badge. He just was on the elevator. Oh, with that, oh that's that happened. Thing. Yeah, to be honest, something like that. I, I hate talking about these bad things. This has something to do with Dragon Con. Like, yeah, yeah. Was, it's just Atlanta. Thanks, Atlanta. Thanks, Atlanta. It's Atlanta. It's Atlanta. But no, the, last year I was like outside smoking a cigarette really late at night, and I like put my cigarette out, and there was some guy that had kind of been talking to me, and I was being friendly, and he like followed. I was well, there's your problem. Third, you yeah, we were friendly. on the yeah, That's we were on the third floor <laughs> that year, and he followed me up the stairs to my room, and like I didn't realize he was following me. I just figured he was staying there. Yeah. And then, like, I heard the the stairway door shut again behind me because he was kind of like a flight behind me or something. And I was like, what? And I turn over and he's like walking behind me. I'm like, okay, maybe he's on this floor. I go to my room. I open the door. I let myself into the room. And he like comes into the room behind me. Oh, yeah. The door. And, and I had male roommates and they were like, who are you? Get yeah, out of here. Brian, yeah. Brian was staying with us and this guy like knocked on the door. And I was like, it was like a horror movie because I was like, looking at him through the little glass. And I was like, oh, oh my oh, God. God. And Brian was like, oh, and he was like, standing on the door. And was like, okay. And I was like, ah. And yeah. Yeah, it's wow. exactly like that. I feel like it was Atlanta, though, but to be honest, these are funny stories to me. They I are. I don't even Listen, think they're bad things about yeah. Dragon Con. They're just like, these are the silly things that happen in Atlanta. I know I'm due yeah. for like a bad experience, but honestly, I've literally had a homeless fan help me to my hotel before. <laughs> like, Aww. I came up on the wrong side uh, on Marta, and I was looking around kind of confused. I had a Star Trek shirt on. This guy's like, He's in like a dress shirt, sleeves rolled up and dress pants. You know, he's got a backpack and he's like, hey, you lost. I said, I think so. I'm looking for the Marriott. He's like, oh, I'll walk you over there. And I'm like, well, he could be walking into me to my death or he could be you know, helping me out. <laughs> I was like, why not? I am a second degree black belt. I can totally take this dude. And uh, I need you. I need you next year to come with really me. He really walked me all the way to the Marriott doing Star Trek trivia with me the entire oh. freaking time. We were uh. like grilling each other on Star Trek. And then he's like, hey, you know, this is kind of where I give you my spiel. I am kind of looking for a job right now. I gave him like $10. He's the happiest guy ever. And uh, I felt good about it. So thanks, Atlanta. Well, I mean, I've, I've had the same experience with, with homeless people in Atlanta, to be honest. The year I stayed, like, not at a host hotel, there was uh, a guy that, like, wandered up outside of our hotel. And we had, like, an entire, my, my friend and I had an entire conversation with him. And it was great, like. He wasn't. He didn't want anything. He was just kind of chatting with us. Yeah. Like it was fun. I, I don't. Locals love Dragon Con. Like yeah, it seems. Are, it's kind of like the circus. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Except not really, because we're not freaks. We're beautiful people. <laughs> and what, I did um, walk across America's Mart that street, and there was someone like with their hand out the window, window just filming like the the salmon yeah. going upstream of all <laughs> the nerds. <laughs> I don't blame them. Honestly, if if I lived there and this wasn't my thing, I'd be like. I mean, to yep. be honest, I'd probably be like, ooh, cool. Like, <laughs> gold. 
but um, I mean, I, and on the on the term of like positives, like we, I, I, I'm joking around. I'm not hating on Dragon Con. These are like crazy stories I have from the convention. Yeah. They don't, they're, I don't think they're bad at all. I, like the the drug selling guy, that wasn't a bad experience. That was kind of funny. Yeah. I really only almost reported him because I was like, we may not be stupid enough to fall for this, but like, <laughs> um, but I mean, in general. Uh, does everybody want to, I'll let you guys go first, or Eve, if you want to go first, what's your, like, most memorable moments from this year's convention? Oh, my God. So, um, I'm part of the Colonial Fleet, and we have, like, organized stuff, like, literally all weekend. Like, you could fill your weekend with fleet stuff, and on Sunday, we had a party at a um, downtown bar, and we buy the bar out, basically, and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I've been asked to that, like, two out of the past four years. So, okay, I kind of have to back up. So first, uh, earlier that day, I had gone to see Trisha Helfer, and I asked her to pretend to punch me in the face for a picture, <laughs> and she yeah, totally yeah. did it, and it was totally amazing, and her skin was so soft, and she smelled so good. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I ended the, the whole interaction with, like, hey, you should come to our party. You know about our party, right? Like, come to our party. And she's like, yeah, I know about it. So later that night when I'm at the party, and uh, I would go back upstairs, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I go back upstairs and I see like the seven foot tall Trisha Helfer because she's so tall. She's taller than everyone else. And so I'm like, oh, she made it. And I go over there to give her a high five. And I'm like, hey, you made it. High five. And uh, and then I turn around and there's like literally <laughs> Truco and Bamber and Callus and Eddie and Grace. They're like all surrounding me because I put my way in to give Trisha Helfer a high five. <laughs> It was a total right place, right time. So that was probably the most memorable part. Um, and then also Felicia Day. Like, I got to meet her, and it's kind of a big deal because she's such a self-made woman, and I'm trying to kind of do a similar thing with sitting at my blog and publishing my books. And uh, so I got to talk to her, and she gave me a hug when I told her that she was a inspiration. She's such a nice lady. So that was awesome. Okay, yeah, really she's nice. great. I saw her um, – I mean, I – I think I missed her at Dragon Con the last time she was there, but I saw her. I mean, I've seen her at San Diego Comic Con the past couple of years, and she was on like a Nerd HQ panel I went to this year. And then she also um, moderated Ali Brosh's panel. You know, Ali Brosh, Hyperbole and a Half. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love her. Yeah, she's well, she's putting out a new book, and like, I'm super depressed because after Comic Con, and I saw like when I saw her panel, she was promoting this new book, and I thought it, it was supposed to come out in October, and then it was pushed back to December, and now it's, now it's April of next Oh, I'm super sad. But yeah, Felicia Day is like friends with Ali Brosh, and also like moderated her panel at Comic Con, oh, nice. and it was, it was so much, I mean, it was so much fun, and she was so fun on the Nerd HQ panel I saw her on. But it's kind of like since I saw her at Comic Con, I didn't really need to like see her at Dragon Con. And I, but I do want to read her book. Have you read it? I did actually. It's somewhere around here. Um, but yeah, it's amazing. It's really, really good. And it there's a lot about her success, but also a lot about her self doubt, which is like huge for me right now because there's a lot of self doubt when you're trying to start something oh, or even yeah. maintaining something. Like she talks about how like it was the hardest for her when everything was going well. Like then the pressure's on. So. Mm -hmm. It's it's super good. I highly recommend it. Yeah, yeah. I I, I want to read it. I just I have my I have a book pile like this big. <laughs> it's a really easy read too, honestly. Like it's so well written and it's so funny um, that it's just easy to get through. Yeah, it's, it's uplifting too. Um, for me, I think uh, uh, I'd say like I really. Did you see the guy that was wandering around with the Iron Throne on a cart? Yes, yes, okay. I did. So that that's actually, amazing. he's actually a friend of mine. I met him through another mutual friend and um, we, I didn't, I had no idea he was doing this. I had no idea he was making this Iron Throne. Secret cosplay. Huh? Secret cosplay. Yeah, secret, secret, yeah, secret cosplay. <laughs> and uh, he, I had no idea he was making it and he showed up at like every year we have like a welcome dinner at Hooters and it's just like, it's my friends and I, but like anybody, literally anybody who knows me is welcome to come to it and uh it, it became Hooters by default because the first year was supposed to go somewhere else and their like stove or their, their gas line was out. Oh so, no. <laughs> yeah. The gas line was out so they couldn't cook anything and Hooters was right across the street. So we're like, yeah, I guess we'll go to Hooters. And then we just, <laughs> just kept going there. Nice. Um, but so he came to that and he shows me like on his phone. Oh yeah. Look the back of this truck. I brought this iron throne. And I was like, Oh, 
God. But I ended up God running bless into him, him for being seriously, ambitious enough. <laughs> seriously, like I, I actually wrote, a, I did a re, uh, an interview with him um, for the Geek Area, which was like obviously totally of my own accord. Like I, you know, asked him yeah. how he made the throne and everything, and you know, this wasn't this wasn't something I did as press. This was something I did because I wanted people to recognize like how much hard work. He put into that and how much of his invention and it was for just other people right i mean he was literally yeah. partying this around for other people to take pictures with i mean yeah and he 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 definitely used it for himself as well like he got pictures of christian nairn in it because he cosplays hodor and he got a picture of finn jones who plays loris terrell in it and everything so he he used it for himself too but it was mostly yeah. for other people and i it was just like what per, what there there aren't many people out there who would literally give up so much of their convention mm -hmm. to just make other people happy. Yeah. You know, Josh is one of those people. Like, yeah, he's, like, he's he's the sweetest. He is he is a really nice guy. Um, so between I would say it was the Iron Throne and then um, I'm trying to remember. That. Oh, I was on a cosplay video. I wish I could give you the link right now. <laughs> like, I'll probably maybe I'll post it in the comments later or something. But I'm it wasn't uh, it wasn't the big one. Um, What's the big one that they do it like uh, boogie something? Oh my god, I can't remember. There's one like big cosplay video company that they do like a big video every year. It wasn't that one. It was it was another random like cosplay video, but it was I was dressed as Katy Perry and my friend Brian was dressed as Left Shark. Nice. And like <laughs> so many people took videos of it and they were like, do something. And I was like, all right. And I would start singing Teenage Dream and then realize like three lines in that I don't know the rest of the words. So <laughs> like, I don't know the like, words of the song. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, the one video I've seen, it was covered with music. <laughs> yeah, because she was like, Teenage Dream and make me snow for <laughs> <laughs> No idea what the words. That's how I would do it too, because I know the complete lyrics to nothing. You nothing. you should have said something like Game of Thrones. You should have been like, I'm K B Perry, and this is Jamie Shark. I don't know. I don't know. Like, We've got it for next year. You've got to put some preparation into this. Yeah, I know the words to a lot of songs, but they're all like it's not those. And all that yeah. listening that we did like, in preparation for me, this. You asked me to rap Gangsta's Paradise, and I oh my god, it. oh my god, <laughs> in the viral probably. I could do that. But uh, but yeah, so I was just excited because I've never been in a cosplay video before. So. Uh, and Becca, yeah, let us go. Your biggest, oh, my biggest moment? Um, or most oh, memorable moment. Let's see. I mean, I got a couple. I have two that really stand out to me. Um, well, we did a pop stars group our second, or no, Sunday night. And um, we had Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, Amy Winehouse, Kesha. Anybody else? And you. me? I mean, and I was Megan Trainer, And uh, this guy was playing the saxophone. He just, he was in costume. He just played the saxophone. That's all he did. He was in a costume. <laughs> Oh my and god, like, I'm I totally saw those guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> they like they tried to was... serenade each other. At yeah, 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 yeah. They always play the saxophone. And like that was them, the saxophone guys. And so they <laughs> and I was like, I was like, nobody knows who I am. Can you play all about that bass? This guy played all about that bass on the yeah. saxophone. And I was so thrilled. I was also <laughs> only a dragon. <laughs> only a dragon con. Yeah. People take requests at Dragon Con. It's amazing. Yeah, he was he was really great. And then um um, I think the other one was probably because this is my first big con. Um, I got a chance to meet some of the guys from the 100, and I'm pretty new to that show. And um, I'm working on an article right now for the Gary about uh, how welcoming and how amazing that these guys are. And um, the panel was incredible; they were hysterical. Um, Richard Harmon is sorry if there's anyway. Um, Richard yes. Harmon is magical, and <laughs> like you were saying about. You know, he smelled nice and he had soft hands. Whatever. It's like a and, um, common thing with celebrities. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, he was he was celebrity he was boot camp so, where they have to smell nice at all times and have yeah, soft hands. Yeah, he was so nice. And then um, Chris uh, Christopher Larkin was just a dream. He was the sweetest guy. And um, he still has a flip phone, which I find adorable. He like brought it out. He's like, "You got a sucky phone? Look at this." He's got a flip phone. <laughs> and then um, drug dealers. Did you tell yeah, him? That? Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> but he, uh, he, no, he's a sweetie. And then I, um, I didn't get a chance to meet Ricky Whittle, but he was just like the care that he showed each fan. And I think that that's really important for a lot. And you know, of course, all most of the people at DragonCon, from what I understand, most of the celebrities were really 
welcoming, but just the 100 guys, meeting them, seeing their panel, um, taking photos with them afterwards. They were just, you know, like, they were, and also met Finn Jones. He was a darling. And uh, he, yeah, he was, because uh, oh I was God. like, I was like standing off to the side and I, I forgot like, about the I was, like, I was like, I can't, I can't afford a, I can't afford a picture right now. I'm sorry. And uh, cause I was, I was like, I'm saving up my money for Richard Harmon. Like I didn't want to say that, but <laughs> he was like, so he's like talked to me for a second and then he like jerked the camera out of my hands and he was like, selfie. And I was like, ah, <laughs> but, um, they were, they seriously were the nicest guys. They were incredible and so accommodating and so warm and so friendly. And I think that a lot of that gets lost now. And, uh, so it was really nice. Yeah, 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 you don't you don't get that sort of one on one you stuff don't. at Comic Con. Like mm -hmm. we um, we went up to Christian Nier and Hodor's table. It was like six of us, and we we're like, "Hey, we're in these anime basketball." Yeah, they were in bas basketball. Will you hold this basketball for us and, and take a picture with us? He's like, "Yeah, sure." Right. <laughs> I talked to Richard. Uh, Richard Harmon. I talked to Richard Hatch for like twenty. <laughs> no, minutes. Richard Harris, Dan Harmon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Some guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I talked to Richard Hatch for like twenty minutes, and then um, who's the other one? Oh, I mean, I did. I was in the Katie Cassidy press conference, and that was cool, especially because she like stayed after and like chatted with everybody for a couple minutes, like one on one. Considering it was a press conference, she didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I also interviewed Dino Gorman, and like to be honest, there was another girl from the Geek Area who was supposed to be at Dragon Con and had like a family issue and couldn't make it and she yeah. didn't know until a couple weeks before so Dino Gorman was her interview and I had to take it on and I'm like dude I'm sorry the only thing I know you from is The Hobbit I've got Ooh. some questions that I gathered from <laughs> I mean I told him like I've got some questions yeah. I gathered from my friends you know like and, but he, he talked to me for like we did like the interview they, they give you like 10 or 15 minutes and then afterward he like hung out in the room and talked to me for like 10 minutes about my yeah. costume he like, was, he was out. a totally different atmosphere for, for yeah. the guests it seems like they get like a little note that says it's totally okay to be cool with the fans they, yeah and because <laughs> like, no they're, they're gonna be like get away Just, the only yeah. time that's a problem is when certain celebrities stay out too late the night before and don't that's show up for their 9 a.m <laughs> interviews <laughs> yeah the panels are also fun when they do show up and they look really Really rough like god bless Aaron <laughs> Douglas I guess he had oh an after god. party after he the was, party <laughs> he was at like the 2 30 p.m. panel on Friday and Who? he was like John Aaron, Raymond? no Aaron oh. Douglas from, from <laughs> Battlestar Galactica the 2 30 p.m. panel on Friday He's he was like rough like I, I'm not sure he was sober to be completely he, he was like, <laughs> on Sunday and he would drink you know, normal, but I guess his after party went on to like four or five in the morning and he had a oh, trust me. Monday morning. Yeah. I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I do not blame him at all. Like, I mean, <laughs> even at Comic-Con where these people are like professionally there, I did an interview with, um, with Dan Harmon and Justin Goylin who do Rick and Morty and they walked into the room with glasses that had clearly had liquor on ice in them and wow. somebody pulled a bottle of bourbon and a bottle or a bottle of whiskey maybe bourbon or whiskey out of a bag and a bottle of vodka poured straight vodka and straight you know bourbon what? or whiskey into these oh cups God, sorry Marmalade. and like they were just sitting there drinking it wow and they had a panel, <laughs> they had a panel right after this interview I mean, if and they went to this comic con this Comic Con panel where they're like legitimately working, not not Dragon Con. Like Comic Con is all about like, yeah, pushing yeah. yourself. Like, oh yeah, and they you were. Gotta... The, I have nothing against that, dude. Have fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm glad Aaron. Oh, and thank I'm glad God. Aaron Douglas got wasted on Thursday night. And I'm, and I love like, it when they do. It's like that's why they should come to Dragon Con and be like, oh yeah, that's mm -hmm. a con where I get to get wasted and like all the fans. Yeah, because cool. they were. Because Dino Gorman was out, I saw him chilling out, and I walked past, and he was like, and I was like, oh, and because I didn't even know who he was, and so I was like, that's a guy from The Hobbit, and I was like, oh. and then of course, and then Finn Jones was um, singing and dancing to the Beastie Boys in an elevator at the Marriott, yeah. apparently, and then Ricky and uh, Richard Harmon were on Periscope, you know, filming uh, the Mad Max rave. <laughs> Mm, yeah, Dragon Con is Dragon Con is great. great for that. Um, oh yeah, the Lost Girl panel, Rachel and Paul Amos, they were they were toast. <laughs> like when they showed up, like he had a hat on, he was doing like <laughs> the, the end of shame. Like 
They, nice. I, I can't remember what they were asked, but they're like, whatever anyone tells you, we were in bed early last night. Oh my god! I wish I had seen that. <laughs> I mean, literally, I'm not going to name names, but my 9 a.m. interview on Sunday, I wish I just hadn't gotten on that bed for it because this person didn't show up. And somebody, like the, the press girl literally was like, well, guess he partied too hard last night. Oh, I was like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but I mean, let's be honest. Like, then why the hell is media relations scheduling a nine a.m. Yeah. Come on, it's we should like, know better by now. And you should like, be able to I knock struggled. on their door and be like, "Let I me went in." To bed. Excuse, I went to bed. Me. Excuse me. I went to bed early on Saturday night, and by early, I mean like one a.m. after drinking for about fourteen hours straight. So, <laughs> like, waking yeah. up at eight o'clock on Friday on Saturday Sunday morning, I was like. My alarm went off. I was like, ah, oh, 15 more minutes, 15 more minutes. Ah, oh, crap. I could get up and put on clothes and I didn't shower. <laughs> like, I don't know the gross. No, I was in, I wore regular clothes to both of my, or to, I wore regular clothes to my, to the Katie Cassidy press conference and to that 9 a.m. interview that was, you know, that he didn't show up. And then I wore my Katy Perry like dress from the Super Bowl last year, but no wig to the Dino Gorman interview. He's like, so what is this wearing? Is this you or is this a costume? <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. well, did you ever watch, like, did you watch the Super Bowl? He's like, oh, we don't really watch football in New Zealand. <laughs> I was like, oh. And the, the, the press girl that was there was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was this thing, it was Katy Perry. You have a left shark, right? <laughs> like, yes, I do. Yeah, there were two left sharks, actually. There's one that yeah. was with no Katy Perry. Wait a minute, so Could it be both left sharks at that point? <laughs> You can be left shark and yeah. right shark. You can just like <laughs> right shark knows how to dance. <laughs> left shark. Um, but anyway, as we wrap this up, so are you planning on going back to Dragon Con next year, Eve? Oh yeah, the tickets purchased. Get them now because they're already eighty dollars. Yeah, I hiked it. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm gonna go as press probably next year, if anything. So I'm, uh, maybe I should try that next year. You should. <laughs> or 2017 when yeah. the blog's like really big. I mean, like, my first year that I applied, they accepted me. They probably wouldn't accept multiple people from a small website, but one person. And when I say small, I mean, like, not, you know, tens of thousands of hits a month or whatever. Like, yeah. but they may accept one. The only thing is, like, your first year, unless you're with a big outlet, like Mary Sue or, like, one of the news, yeah. oh. uh, one of the news outlets or something, you're not going to get interview. Yeah, uh, capability because I didn't have it my first year as press. But to be honest, I don't, I don't like even if I go as press next year, I'm not sure how keen I am on being mm -hmm. like I'm, so I'm at 9 asking for a bunch of interviews. Yeah, because I had four scheduled and only two of them actually happened. Oh, and none of it was because of me. Um, I mean, I'm not complaining except for getting up early that one morning because the the second one that was canceled, they canceled like an hour before, and I was like, "Oh, good, I can drink now." <laughs> also, I was wearing an an a basketball anime outfit. So. A wig. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I was just like a boy, so it was yeah. kind of like, "This is gonna be fun meeting this person." <laughs> um, but I mean, so do you? Are you doing? Uh, the hotels next year are going to be such a mess because, like, the Westin has already opened up and sold out of their first yeah. block of rooms. The Dude. Hilton is gone. The it's always gone. Yeah, the Hyatt did the grandfather clause this year, so they're going to be gone. For the most I know. Part. I got really close to getting a guaranteed room because my friend was able to get them to agree to give him two rooms for next year. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and I guess someone noticed a clerical error and told him no, yeah. like, a few weeks later. And I got my hopes all up. So I will be in the rat race with everyone else. And um, barring that, there's always rack face that opens up closer to the con. Yeah, yeah. I'm That's the one thing. Away. I mean, I should, to be honest, I was looking for roommates like two weeks when the one girl from the Geek Area who was supposed to go who had to back out, I was looking for a roommate literally two weeks before the convention this year. Yeah. The only thing like, about doing it that way is like the established friends that I like to room with, like we can't, if we can't get one room, then we can't stay together. And that's kind of a bummer. We have to kind of, yeah, we were all really out. split up here, but I think mostly the Marriott and the Hyatt, there were a couple of people from Mike's and Fire that stayed in the West and mm -hmm. most of us were in, yeah. I don't know how but I yeah, feel about the grandfather thing. Like, if I'm grandfathered, I'm probably going to love it. But since I'm not, I'm kind of like, that's some bullshit. To be honest, I love it. And I'm also nervous as hell. Like, until that deposit comes out of my, it, until that deposit is charged to my credit card, I'm going to be nervous as shit. Yeah. Be like, and that's not for another week and a half. Um, 
But I mean, they also are going to give, I think they're going to give time for people to kind of be like, hey, why, you know, what happened here? Why didn't you charge me? Why, why is my room canceled? It's always um, a bit of a cluster, as we know, but we all sign up for the pain every year. Well, and Passkey, I mean, I get the <laughs> conventional masochist. Yes. Passkey is the worst, but to be honest, like all, I really wish that Dragon Con would work with every hotel in the area because like you i know you're on reddit a good amount um and the dragon con subreddit like some of the things they were saying is like the, the aloft is like okay yeah. one minute they're one minute they're taking reservations and they only want one night's deposit then the next minute they want like the they're entire thing paid up front mm -hmm. well and, and my friend got she actually ended up booking a room just in case at the ellis and they only made her pay like one night's deposit but they wouldn't give her the con right yeah, because it was like that's not live yet. You're gonna have to call back later and ask for it. That's and it's so like funny. the one year that I tried to get the Marriott after they so Marriott's not passkey anymore. It's through Marriott, which I was super excited about because I travel a lot for business. I had gotten a gold membership that year that I was trying to get it, and um, and it worked so well. It sold out so freaking fast mm -hmm. <laughs> that like I literally put in my, my information, I was signed into the account, it has all my payment information, I was like, this is gonna be gravy, I'm definitely getting a hotel room this year. I see double bed, I click, yes, that's what I want, sold out. I'm like, how is this possible? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is literally oh, I five mean, seconds in. With the, with the Marriott, for, for last year, when it was for this year, it, I was with somebody who, like, we were in the same room with the same internet, and I'm on my computer, and he's on his computer, on the same effing internet connection. Everything's working just fine for both of us. He gets a room, I don't. At the same exact moment. It like, was weird. And then they kept releasing them in waves. Like you'd hear, oh, someone got it. Or like half an hour later, they'd be like, there's rooms, go get it. Cause yeah. you know, Reddit is the, is the place to be to like people will early warning sign you and you'll kind of be like, okay, oh, yeah. do it now. I mean, but, I, I'm a huge, like, I don't like Reddit, but the Dragon Con Reddit is awesome. Reddit is great if you stay in the subreddits, like the nice, happy communities, like the yeah. R Actual Lesbians is an amazing community, and DragonCon is, is PSG. Lesbians. Yeah, like, stay in the subreddits, don't go in the big ones, the big scary ones. <laughs> See, my problem is, I'm like a mod of a local subreddit, and it's the worst. Which you wouldn't think, because it's a really small sub, <laughs> like, the it's people like, that are in this yeah. sub are horrible, and it's like, this is Bernie making, this is making, no, the Bernie Sanders people, I don't care about, like, I mean, they were posting a little bit too much, but it was the people who were complaining about the Bernie that's Sanders That's what I meant, people. that's what I meant, the Bernie Sanders complainers. <laughs> oh, the Sorry. irony. Reddit, you offshoot. just don't understand. Yeah, offshoot of, of that. But yeah, so, so I'm part of this really small subreddit that's absolutely horrible, so that's why I look at the Dragon Con one, and I'm like, this is well run. Well organized, they've got people their nice. Like, they've got their main post. People are nice. Like people get snarky sometimes, but I don't ever feel like it's rude or out of line. Like yeah, I can post a link to an article I wrote in there and not feel like I'm just going to get downvoted because people are assholes. Same, same. And I definitely have been uh, a little bit more active on Reddit with with trying to get interest in some of the things I'm doing. So you, it's so bizarre the rules on Reddit because it's all different depending on where you're at. And like one. Subreddit won't let you do just images, and some won't let you do images at all, and it's just it's just weird. But yeah, drag, but, the Dragon Con one is good. They really are. Yeah. Um, well, to wrap this up, because we're like already a few minutes over time. Yeah. Well, I guess not. Because actually, we didn't, no, we didn't, we didn't, didn't start until later. Didn't start yeah. Up, but um, to wrap this up, uh, upcoming conventions or anything? Are you going to any anytime soon, Eve? I am completely spoiled by Dragon Con. I tried to go to Mega once after I experienced what is Dragon Con. I was like, was oh, that the year I met you? Yes, that's when <laughs> I ran you down. So that was one good thing that came out of Mega. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, I felt too sober all the time. Yep. And there was only just things to buy. And I'm not really yep. super into like, even at Dragon Con, I don't really buy anything unless it's something that's super unique. So I, uh, I, I hoard all my money for Dragon Con. Yeah, no, I, I've been to Mega Con twice and it was <sighs> that horrible. The, the second time actually was worse because the couple panels I tried to go to that were like writing panels or whatever were in these like cramped ass rooms. And if you didn't get there 30 minutes before for this little writing panel, nobody famous is on it. You weren't getting a seat. There's no air conditioning. You're like lucky if you get into the room to hear them at all. 
And then last year I tried to go to the Walking Dead panel and the volunteers, I lined up two hours before. The volunteers counted off the line not long after I got in it. I was like in the top 500 and they were like, yeah, this, this room holds 1500 people. We're clearing it before the panel. So you'll be fine. Yeah. The panel before ended, they were letting, like people were leaving the room and then turning around and going right back in the other door. Ooh. And then the line had like, the, the line of people had wrapped back around to its beginning and they were letting in the people at the end and the people at the beginning at the same time. And I was like 30 people from getting into that room and I was like, oh, I hate this convention. Yeah, no, I didn't even try to get into panels there. I met Michael Hogan there, which was amazing. Yeah, me too. So cool. He was so cool. That was like, that was a highlight, meeting you and Michael Hogan. That was a highlight of my MegaCon. <laughs> And, and I live I in Florida, so it's really easy for me to get over there, but it's just not, yeah. it doesn't have a lot for me, so. Yeah. What about you guys? Well, uh, we have Walker Stalker Con, which is happening over Halloween. Um, nice. I'm meh about it, to be honest. I like Walking Dead, but. I kind of, I kind of, like, absorb Tara's meh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited because it's going to well, be so amazing. I just like I anything about Halloween. Walker, it's like. Embrace the Walker's, Halloweenness. I mean, yeah, I'm excited about the Halloween part of it. Yeah, but Walker Stalker Con has become like really corporate. It's like worse than Wizard World. Mm. Mm. Like I went to their first convention ever, and then I went to their the the one they had in Atlanta last year, and the differences between those two were palpable. But this one, like, they're it's like ninety nine dollars to get in for the weekend. So it's a hundred dollars to get in for the weekend, and then if you want to go to the Andrew Lincoln panel on Sunday, you have to pay another twenty five bucks. That is what I call BS on. Like if you don't like him more that than I already paid to get into your convention, I'm already out. Like the whole VIP pass or like yeah, I looked into going to like a supernatural convention because I love supernatural so much, and I want to go to Canada because why not? And uh, like their pricing structure was so bizarre. It was like bronze, silver, gold package, and I was like, "This is bullshit." I don't pay the yeah. Walker Starter Con has definitely taken a page out of their book. <laughs> but um, so yeah, we have Walker Starter Con, and then it's kind of like a long break because there's like no conventions that happen in between November and February. Um, but one Monday thing, weekend? I don't know. One thing I want to plug is Ice and Fire Con tickets are on sale. Yay! So if you read Song of Ice and Fire, like especially, or watch Game of Thrones, but like we are a much more like Song of Ice and Fire like book fo focused convention. Mm -hmm. Lots of like book cosplays. Although, although I have to say, I haven't read the books. I'm working on them still very slowly. But um, I'm a show watcher very baby new show watcher and I went <laughs> and I had the time of my life. Like it yeah. is oh, yeah. Ice and Firecon is incredible. Tara's incredible. Um I think I'm gonna be with really convention just makes me think people are gonna get stabbed and poisoned and No well, I mean, <laughs> stabbed with fun. Stabbed with fun. Uh, to be honest, like one person ran an assassin like an unauthorized oh by the way. I mean it was it, like we, it was authorized in that we were like, yeah you can do this, but we're not like gonna I say this have, is part of the schedule. I still have the snake in my makeup bag. And he, he gave <laughs> he gave everybody that signed up plastic snakes, Olaf stickers yeah, for some reason. Yeah, frozen and like, stickers. And um, what else was it? I don't a spoon. remember. Oh, a spoon. A spoon. A so you spoon. could stab somebody with a plastic spoon. And say Palamagulis. And or then, you could put a sticker on their drink, and if they drank out of it, then they were poisoned. poisoned. <laughs> or you could put like a snake somewhere, and they were <laughs> bitten. Yeah, yeah, it was. That's exactly the kind of shenanigans I would expect. It was great, yeah. though. It just literally should be ice and fire shenanigans con. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's it. camp. It's camp. It is. It's camp. a grown-up camp it. for people who love ice and fire. I love so anyway, it. I don't know why, uh, but our tickets are on fun. sale. It's uh, iceandfirecon.com. Please don't click on the tickets link on the main page. It's actually the shop link in the menu bar that you want to click on. They are $50 each. Um, and once you purchase the ticket, you'll get information on how to book a room. We have plenty of accommodations left this year. Did you guys change? Did you change location? Oh, yeah, we changed location. We're, we used to be in Ohio, and now we're in Virginia. So we're it's a bigger bigger location, whatever. But um, So, yeah, other than Ice and FireCon and... Uh, I mean, I'm going to C2E2, but that's like whatever. What is that? I know I'm Chicago. a horrible person now. Chicago convention. Chicago. It's sort of like a, it, it, it's like New York Comic Con or um, San Diego, where it's a little bit more industry focused in terms of okay. the programming and everything. But 
anyway, so that's about it. Um, I guess in that case, we can sign off. Uh, I am Tara. I am here with Becca. Stephanie of the Makeup Mama Cosplay was with us earlier. And Eve from, is it some nerdgirl.wordpress.com? Yes, that's the good stuff. Okay. And I've, I've actually, I, I co-wrote an article, one article for that, and I'll be writing a couple more as well. You guys should check it out. They've got a great article about Ellen Ripley up. Uh, as well as the the Dragon Con, somebody else did a Dragon Con wrap up article that was really good, um, and we've got some web comics and stuff that are on there that are really fun. Yeah. So check out somenerdgirl.wordpress.com. And as always, if you guys need anything or have any questions, you can email us at thegeekery at gmail.com. And other than that, have a wonderful evening, and thank you for joining our Dragon Con webcast. Cool. <laughs>